Hello everyone and thank you for being here today. I have some information that I want to share with you and just a little reminder about something that just recently happened. Recently we had a post with Peter the Insider and actually Unit 374 joined us and we had a discussion regarding um, what was happening at the present time. Um, for those of you who remember that interview and discussion, you'll recall that Peter was concerned about ICBMs and um, that's um, intercontinental ballistic missiles that would shut down the electronic grid. And so we had a, a big concern about it. We had more than one discussion, one of which we shared with the public. And so he um, uh, talked to the team about having some of these issues resolved for the benefit of the higher good for everyone. And they were aimed towards the East Coast. I have that footage to share with you right now. And the reason why I'm going to show this is because a series of events did happen afterwards, maybe not to the scale that they wanted it to be. But why don't we take a listen to what happened here? Oh my God, what is going on here? It is pretty much or all of those things what we will talk about today, respectively in this show. They are, let's say, consequences of 88, hello Anthony, uh, of 88 mission and back. And nowadays situation is US wants to, to launch multiple missiles, ICBMs, you know, from Wisconsin and Nebraska and so on, Iowa. Uh, to all over the place. What does it mean? Yeah, to Russia, to China, to India, and all kind of that stuff. Of course, of course, it will be with answer. So it pretty much looks like, yeah, doomsday is coming. Uh, it will be in, uh, it will be, or it should be, in December 1st. And that's the stuff. We will try to do our best in order to prevent that. It almost happened a few weeks ago and we prevent that uh, via, let's say, layers of, uh, let's call it shift, if you if you see or saw the movie shift, it was absolutely crazy, you know, M movie shift. And it was pretty much something like that, and I don't want to say like that, but very similar to that. And uh, I was like, okay, how in the world should we stop this? Because we make that those things let's say successfully but we never deal dealt with something like that what was so big and so fast as icbms so we needed to use 100 for uh 20 layers in total and they wow they simply uh shifted pretty much shifted to another reality timeline context of existence call it as you like long story short they were not threat for us anymore problem is <clears throat> very um prominent i don't want to say the names uh, we, we can say the names yeah, we can say the names. Do you want to say, say a name? You say, you're referring to Hunter Biden? Yeah, yeah, you say, yeah, yeah. you say. Uh, they want to make uh, this launch because it is like, what if will happen, what will happen if this crucial mistake will uh, repeat? What does it mean, quote unquote, crucial mistake? 
in the first place, the maintenance of no rat happened. It, it was uh, in the beginning of uh, this year, right? It, it was absolutely perfect. And it's, it has zero sense to make the same stuff right here, right now, because it took or it should take from three to four months, okay? In, on, in order, in, in normal way, proper way. This took three weeks, not three or four months, not three or four months, three weeks. All of basic countermeasures, safety countermeasures. Nope, everything was skipped. And NORAD was out of quote unquote Jewish, aka electricity and all kind of that stuff for 50 hours. It happened pretty much the, the, the time or let's say in the, the days, what it was like two, three weeks ago. Am I right, Jessica? Something like that. I, I, I am not. Yeah, it, it yeah everything went down. Everything went down and they were rebooting or, or uh, you know. But, but Jessica, it, that was the first stuff. Amateur, amateurism. It was absolutely crazy. So at this point, Peter is describing or explaining that during this timeline he, that he could view that NORAD had shut down all the grids, that he saw these ICBMs come through, this was part of the timeline, and that they were coming full throttle, I mean, from all different directions. And so uh, from various locations, which he mentioned earlier, uh, from, from I think that they were triggered and then activated uh, from another source, and we're supposed to come and hit the East Coast uh, and, and the West Coast, starting off in the Midwest. I think he mentioned Iowa and um, a few other states. So we were very, very concerned. I won't, I won't deny that. I, I did run out and get some um, safety gear and just to try to prepare myself for whatever was coming. I know that some people think this is an exciting moment and this is something that we are supposed to go through and that means that you know we're going to have a change and a shift and everything but it's not the shift that they're planning that's not it, it it was a promise someone is promising these things i don't foresee that this is anything that's going to be positive so it needs to be reconciled and dealt with correctly and so in this process we need to uh, be more aware and alert of, of what is happening and um, not to believe everything, but actually do your research and and, and challenge whatever you need to challenge. But um, I'm concerned about what's happening right now. So Peter had predicted this shortly after that. Let's take a look what else is going on. It was a December 11th. There was actually a cyber army invading a critical U.S. services, a utility in Hawaii, a West Coast port and a pipeline are among the victims in the past year. The Chinese military is ramping up its ability to disrupt key American infrastructures, including power and water utilities, as well as communications and transportation systems, according to the U.S. officials and industry security officials. Hackers affiliated with China's People Liberation Army have borrowed into the computer system of about two dozen critical entities over the past year, these experts said, and the intrusions are part of a broader effort to develop ways to sow panic and chaos or snarl logistics in the event of a U.S.-China conflict in the Pacific, as they say. So essentially, if they uh, hear uh, lower, they says the hackers also attempted to break into the operators of Texas Power Grid, which operates independently from the electrical systems of the rest of the country. So they literally tried to shut down the entire U.S. And um, 
These previously indis undisclosed details help fill out a picture of a cyber campaign dubbed Volt Typhoon, first detected about a year ago by the U.S. government in the United States and China, struggled to stabilize a relationship more antagonistic now than it has been in decades. At the moment that Peter contacted me, uh, President uh, Xi Jinping had visited the United States in California, which was a very odd place for him to be uh, visiting because typically presidents visit in Washington, D.C. or around that area. Maybe Camp David is another location where people of that high of a status, of political status, would come and visit. And it's just not common. It's not a common location. And at that very day was when Peter said that they were expecting to have this whole event take place. Peter did end up uh, bringing the team over to try to neutralize some of this effect, but it is clearly not over. Soon after that, um, I became aware of this movie, Leave the World Behind. Uh, this movie was uh, produced by Michelle and Barack Obama, and uh, clearly they, you know, have the script and knew what's ahead. So um, they were talking and. I mean, they, they were producing this movie, which takes place on Long Island, of all places, uh, for those of you who are familiar with the Montauk Project, and, you know, kind of separated but close to New York City, which is another um, location that seems to be heavily targeted, like Texas, and they have, you know, specific states for different reasons why they should be targeted um, just like, you know, their nations also have uh, vulnerabilities, but um, in the case of Peter said that, that the U.S. government's doing this or the or the influence coming into the U.S. government, um, I should say it like that because we have many influences that are occurring right now. Uh, for those of you that are not familiar with this movie, this came out, I believe, in um, either October or November but this was the first time I had heard of it. And it clearly brings up, you know, this this weird uh, scenario that here they show this deer, how all the animals react really weird because they shut down the grid. And this uh, piercing sound that they get impacted by because of the effect of how the grid is being shut down and the weapons that are being used. And Peter did talk about a reality in the past which if anyone um, is interested, we we can uh, find that other video where he talks about, um, it's sort of a combination of um, a metro um, reality where they destroy, utterly destroy the upper atmosphere so that um, if you are there for any length of time, you literally go insane from, from the piercing sounds as the upper atmosphere is destroyed, not only from uh, whatever they did to the atmosphere, creating um, abnormal uh, frequencies, as well as I think there was, it was biochemical and nuclear and, and, and um, radiation and, and all sorts of different things. There was this incident where they have all of these cars lined up. They're all Tesla, white Tesla vehicles. And interesting enough, there was was a recall, I believe, of these vehicles. And let me uh, find that. So Tesla recalls nearly all two million of its vehicles on the U.S. roads, which is very similar to the cars. Uh, maybe it is exactly the same, but it looks very similar to the cars that were out of control, and they were um, self-driving vehicles that seem to all collect in one location because of uh, some type of program that was put in there. And they made a point to show that in the movie. And this article came out on December 13th. So we have Peter warning us on the 1st. December 11th is when we have the cyber attack. And on the 13th, and there are all these recalls, and then prior to that is the movie. As I was looking at the movie, 
I started thinking about Matthew um, Perry, who had recently passed as well, and he was part of Friends because in the movie, uh, Leave the World Behind, uh, the big emphasis on the youngest daughter is this wanting to see the last episode of Friends. And so I thought, well, maybe we should take a look at what this last episode of Friends has to say. And so, um, you know, at some point, you know, you, there's the separation, they're in love, and then they, they come back, and she's at the wrong airport, and, you know, it's kind of like a, a bit chaotic. And um, towards the end, in the final shot, it shows an empty apartment, there's nobody there. They're slowly panning, and here's this, this house, this, this apartment that you're constantly seeing activity or something going on, and now the very last scene of the series shows an empty apartment and nothing is there. And they play um, Jefferson Airplane's embryonic journey. The thing about Jefferson Airplane is they also have the song about um, Ask Alice, which is talking about going down the rabbit hole. And, and Peter also talks about that quite often. So we can look at... And uh, that is the song of going into, it's pretty much uh, going into the quantum space. Things are not making any sense. So Matthew Perry, towards the end of his life, which was kind of a weird passing. I mean, people knew that he had some health issues and he had some substance abuse issues, but he was posting some weird things. And they said, you know, calling himself Matt man, like Batman. And his last picture that he was showing was an outdoor jacuzzi, jacuzzi where yeah, supposedly he drowned. But um, <clears throat> here they have like scenes of Batman and there's Batman everywhere. Uh, kind of like sleep well, every, everybody. I've got the city tonight. And the actor once again signing off Matt Man, right? So people are like, well, what's going on here? This doesn't make any sense. So here again, we go back to the movie, leave the world behind. It leads us, it directs us to uh, the, the series Friends, which is you know very popular and seems to be transcending generations. Matthew Perry passes with an odd message. And then it made me think of uh, this event where this this uh, guy from the year 2027, supposedly he stepped into the year 2027, just like in the last scene of Friends, there is absolutely nothing there. They pan across the apartment and nobody's there. And this is what he does. He uses a video recorder and shows so much footage in so many different locations and cities where absolutely nobody's there. And this is, people say, well, this is part of the pandemic, but no one can quite figure out what's going on because there's literally no one around. He's He has keys, he's walking into all different locations. And while I'm looking at that information, I see this woman wearing a Batman outfit, you know, a t-shirt that shows, clearly shows Batman. So I think it's, a, is, is it possible that He's implying that he has gone into another reality, you know, and um, yeah, leaving the body behind. They, they don't need the body when they, they travel into the other reality, typically. I mean, on occasion, yes, but not always. So that's that's something that is um, was quite interesting. But let's go back to the original interview and discussion. What should be done in three to from three to four months in three weeks in the first place and in the second place it should be done in between like three four years okay sometimes when there are not big changes in technology maybe five years why in the world some this happened in the very first i mean very beginning of this year, okay? It was like 
second half of January this year. It absolutely doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense. It's nonsense, right? So it was a setup, period. I don't believe that. It should not happen. And then it is a, another setup. It is a setup. I, I mean, double setup because this happened. Then ICBMs all over the place, you know, and uh, pretty much NORA did did NORA detect them. Just by the way, it was like that was the problem. Uh, like uh, what it was uh, two because it was two sets, uh, one dozen. That means twenty four in total. And NORAD, of course, uh, detect them as total war, so hundreds of them. And all of ICBM silos started to work, started to like in, in immediate, immediate. And I'm like, oh, whoa, whoa, what in the world is going on here? So this this was the first <clears throat> first stage if we if you want to call it that way right and second problem is right here right now right here right now it looks like how can i say that uh parallel okay if you are not absolutely out of 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 picture of it of it do you know what i mean you should not quotes in quotes hard reset computer i mean standard desktop com computer or laptop like just touching physically uh the button okay once it is not necessary and something like that i am not saying that it happened but the whole system start to to behave like that it doesn't make any sense. It is absolutely crazy. Like, holy crap, what is going on? Well, Peter, uh. just to tie just to tie in everything, because you started off discussing a bit about Hunter Biden and um, the first attack was happening when Joe Biden went to California to meet but it with. Was, uh, it, it was there, it was. Uh, yeah, the China's, Chinese discussion. In my second, there. it was October or? I don't know. No, why. no, no, just recently, this last one. The real purpose of Xi Jinping's visit to San Francisco had little to do with Biden. Chinese leader Xi Jinping came to California this week to meet with President Biden, but his primary goal was a more influential crowd, the CEO of America's top tech and financial companies. While Biden came away with a vague climate deal, reopening of military channels, in an unlikely promise to reduce the deadly fentanyl imports uh, flooding our streets. CEOs such as Apple's Tim Cook, Tesla's Elon Musk, BlackRock's Larry Fink, and Blackstone's Stephen Schwartzman paid their way to a handshake deal to keep making money in China, despite deep U.S. reservations with Xi's geopolitical intentions. Xi himself came away the biggest winner, as his audience back home in China watched the business elite of the world's most important market ignore their own government's caution to rush to his side for favors, high school kids swarming a pop star. It's a testament to the different levels of global priorities that our financial leaders live by than our political ones. Traveling to Saudi Arabia for investment conferences, gathering to break bread with dictators, all in the goal of generating profit while government officials try to uphold a standard of freedom and democracy that separates us from authoritarian regimes. Don't get me wrong, there's nothing wrong with making money, but it was odd to witness the competing intentions of these three, no four audiences in the Bay Area. The CEOs reportedly paid up to 40,000 to dine with him, and here the China was open to their investment, a fine meal at the Hyatt Regency in 
little FaceTime. I think people need to wake up. So essentially, our leadership is rushing over to be standing in line, hoping to have a conversation with someone that um, probably sees us nothing more than a number for a social credit system. Everybody needs to wake up. You know, we put some of these people that are very powerful up on a pedestal. Those that are running major companies such as this and have clearly sold out everyone for to make sure that they have enough in the bank. And of course, they will be protected um, if the money switches in any way because they're the ones that are making the decisions. Highest intentions for humanity, people. Whatever is driving these individuals to disregard the rest of humanity for their own good, for their own benefits, we need to ask to um, for uh, complete protection and sovereignty from these drastic and extreme decisions that unbeknownst to them will leave them in the dust as well and they will not be able to hide or run to another planet the, the mars is not going to protect them it will affect everyone everything if uh, it goes to that extreme and uh, no one's really thinking on the upper levels i guess we need to do it for them so just to let you know that if the other idea or their intentions to shut everything down shut down the grid which is supposed to be one of the, part of their script and what is supposed to happen the second part being a civil war and in this case in this storyline i believe is not just um, a racial war but rather um, the government against the people and or whoever the government is at that point because um, if the grid's down we have no defense system and then that's it but i for some reason everyone i, I remember hearing years ago oh, we have to shut down the grid in order to get control of AI or what have you, or uh, none of that made any sense. It wasn't logical. And even people that were somewhat intelligent were making this comment. I understand that they, you know, it's like anything, any type of system you have to reset. We have no guarantee that we're not talking about a reset where they were talking about um, actually blowing out everything that, you know, our transformers and, and everything. So that, that would require a much bigger issue. It would require that all of that equipment be restored and it's not easy to restore all of that right away, which would immediately leave the military and many others, other areas, necessary areas um, that would uh, assist in survival a lot of vehicles won't run because they're insisting on everyone's having vehicles that are electronic at this point. So uh, that, that clearly is an issue. So really think through um, what you're holding on to, ask questions. And um, I hope this, this helps you in some way to think through some of this and reset uh, what your intentions are for the planet and for your own personal life. Um, we're getting down to the wire. So, and I'm not saying that we it's planned that we're going to be destroyed. I know that's what they want for us because they have their bunkers and, and other safeguards. So it's important for you to um, acknowledge that you, there's no one human being that's greater than another on this planet. You deserve, you have just as much of a free will and a purpose and importance on this planet and you need to hold that space and don't believe otherwise. Thank you, everyone, and have a good day.